Oh, fine. You're right on time. Run into this uh, back room here. My things in this room will be packed and ready to go by noon tomorrow. Right, you want to sign here? Fine. Right here. Thank you, sir. See you noon tomorrow. Thank you. Fine. I didn't really believe it. Not until now. You're actually going to do it, aren't you? Pack up all our things and ship them off to her. My things. Not our things. Why did you come back, Jack? Just to get all your junk? Is that why you came back? Just for, just for all this? Well, these are my things, and they're not junk. I mean, you could have sent someone, even the moving people. You could have written. I would have done... I never write letters. Oh, that's right, you don't. A whole year in Australia, not a line. Not even a postcard. Well, I phoned several times, in fact. Oh, yes, you did. You did call. The first time you called to tell me that you missed me desperately and loved me terribly and couldn't possibly live without me. That was the first call. I lived on that one for months. I can still remember every word of it. And then the last call. Yesterday. That was the one that went, hi, I'm in town. How are you? Can you put me up? Could I put you up? My God, we lived together for three years. We were practically married. And you ask if I can put you up? How should I have said it? Well, you, you, you might have told me about her, for starters. You, you could have said, by the way, darling, there's this little bit of blonde fluff in Australia I've met I'm crazy about. She is blonde, isn't she? Patricia? She's blonde. You know what I thought when you called? I thought, well, remember how peculiar he is. I mean, he's, he's out attached. That's just his way. But now he's back because he loves me and... And we're going to get married, and, and everything's going to be just, just like it always was, only better. I never once said anything about getting married. No, you didn't. Nor about Patricia, either. Oh, I got around to telling you about her. But first, you took me to bed. And it was wonderful. It was wonderful, just like it always was. And then you sat up and lit a cigarette. I remember that, the cigarette. That's when you told me about her. And when you told me, everything just went smash. I felt like I'd been kicked in the face. Do you know what that's like, to be kicked in the face? No. But uh, that's a pretty mean right cross you've got there. <laughs> I hardly even touched you. I wish I'd killed you. All these things. I looked after all these things for you so carefully. And now you, you, you're just going to pack them up and, and ship them off to her, the things that we lived with? Do you know what I used to do? I used to, I used to look at all these things and think, oh, Jack loves this piece. Well, Jack likes, likes this piece just so. Well, Jack and I bought that piece when we... Oh, my God, I don't believe it. Well, you, uh, you can keep the big stuff. You're the piano, the couch, especially the couch. I tried sleeping on it last night after... If you're going to throw anything else, will you try and miss the Lowry? I paid quite a lot of money for it. Oh, don't! <laughs> That's it. That's it, will you shut up? <laughs> For God's sake, shut up!
What are we going to have for dinner? Dinner? You don't really expect me to cook for you. <laughs> well, I thought it might be both the, um, well, the civilized and practical thing to do. We have to eat. Go open a can. Hey, you're being awfully unreasonable. Unreasonable? I'm supposed to sit here quietly while you pack up all our things and ship them off to some woman halfway around the world? Not our things, my things. You know what I hope happens? I hope the boat sinks and all your precious junk with it. Look, get something through your head. It's finished. Over. I'll be out of here by noon tomorrow. This place will be yours for the next two months. The lease is paid up until then. And after that, you can do what you want to do. <laughs> I really don't need any more of that scorned woman routine of yours. Okay. 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 Okay, it's over. Would you do me a favor? What? Just explain something to me. Explain what? Explain to me how a man can leave a woman for a year, come back, make love, and two seconds later tell her he's leaving for another woman. Just explain that to me, Jack, and, and I'm not going to say another word. There's nothing to explain. Just the way I am. What a rotten way that must be. I mean, are you sure you don't feel, you don't feel anything? Not even a twinge of remorse? Not the slightest hint of regret? I don't know how many times I have to say this, but I'm gonna try one more time. It's over. We're through. Kaput. Fini. Where are you? Out. Get something to eat. But you'll be back. Tonight? Certainly. Sleep. I don't get any ideas. As far as I'm concerned, this is just a cheap place to crash. Nothing more. I could lock you out. Well, don't try. The lease is in my name. If you lock me out, I'll have the cops down here in two minutes. I just don't understand what's happened. Well, it's simple. Things end. They still say I love you, on that you can rely. No matter what the future brings as time goes by. Go away, Bessie. I'm tired. Jack, please. What? I'm sorry I said all those things. 
I'm sorry I hit you and threw the statue. You said it's over. Okay, I accept that. I accept it now. I just... I just don't want it to end so badly. Well, maybe I shouldn't have done it the way I did. Maybe I should have been a little more diplomatic. But, yeah, I'd really appreciate it now if you'd just go away and let me get some sleep. You don't understand, do you? Understand what? Get the hell out of here and stay out! Finished? Almost. Looks a little different, doesn't it? Yes, a little. Jack, I'm sorry about last night. Whatever possessed you? Oh, never mind. Forget it. Can I help you with anything? Nope. It's all done. You're forgetting this. No, I didn't forget that. You always liked it, so I'm leaving it. Uh, memento. I don't want any mementos. Do you remember where we got it? In that little shop in Chelsea? Yeah, it was raining. That's right. And we didn't have an umbrella, so we, we ducked in, and that little round man with the funny high voice gave us tea. Those were the good times. They were the best times. Yeah. You know, they could be that way again. I could change, Jack. I could be whatever you want me to be. Change? Yes, I could change. You really think you could? How? Well, tell me how you change. Well, uh, in all sorts of ways. I could, um, I could take some courses. I could help you with your work. I could work on my moods, help you with yours. You know, we could do things together. I would be completely different. <laughs> yeah. You certainly would be. You'd be almost unrecognizable. You don't think I could change? Oh, I don't know. I think maybe you could, but take time, help. Okay, what kind of help? Well, there's all kinds. Um, individual counseling, group, group therapy. You think I need that? I mean, you really think that, that would help? Well, if you really want to change, there's no harm in getting expert advice. What if, I, what if I started today? What if I went right to the phone right now and made an appointment? With whom? Well, I don't know, a doctor. Maybe even a psychiatrist. If I did that right now, right this instant, would you stay? Could we try again? No. You don't think I could change? No, I didn't say that. But you're not going to wait around to find out. Well, it's just as well. I don't know how I'd pay for it, anyway. I understand therapy's very expensive. Do you know what I had left in the bank, Jack? $432 in change. Do you know what I had when we met? I was an heiress. You were never an heiress, Betsy. Wasn't I? Well, I know you spent my money like I was. All those trips to Europe and Mexico. Tell me, is your new friend in Australia rich? No, she works for a living. Oh, does she? Well, what does she do? A shop girl, barmaid, an airline stewardess. You're dying to know all about her, aren't you? Yes, of course I am. Okay, I'll tell you about her. 
And for one thing, she's got her head screwed on straight, very straight. She's not one person in the morning, another at noon, yet another at night. When I get up in the morning, I don't have to worry about who's going to be getting up on the other side of the bed that day. Hmm. In other words, she's not the least bit like me. Not in the least. And this paragon of sound common sense and unfailing good humor is going to marry you. Yes, me. <laughs> but I don't remember saying anything all that funny. Yes, you did. You said this wonderful little creature is going to marry you. Well, I was thinking about all the surprises that are in store for her. I mean, I know she's going to be completely delighted with your disappearances. The ones that go on for days and weeks, sometimes even months. And just think how ecstatic she'll be when she first encounters those brooding silences of yours. The ones where you don't open your mouth from one week to the next. Well, you seem to put up with me without too many complaints. Uh -huh. Yes, but then I'm a little bit disturbed, as you so kindly said. So, uh, when does this wedding take place? Two months? Yes, two months. Right. First you have to go to Europe for research. I mean, you do have to use that grant after all the finagling you did to get it. Well, you don't turn grants down. Not if you want to get more. No, you were always very good at that, Jack. Grantsmanship, I mean. And just think, all these little trinkets will be arriving just about the same time you do. Now, what fun you two are going to have unpacking. You must tell her the story behind each piece. You can make it up. Oh, don't forget to tell her about this piece. About the little man in Chelsea, the quaint shop, the rain, and me. Don't forget to tell her about me. You know, I think I will write her a note. No, not about you. Not something else. How does this sound? All of this is for you, darling Patricia. Forever and ever. Do you think she'll like that? Yes, I think she'll love it. Ah. What have we here? Dear Patricia, I don't know what Jack has told you about me. <laughs> well, nothing, actually. Why should I? But he and I have been living here as lovers. <laughs> well, that's stretching it a bit. Ever since he returned, Jack is incapable of being faithful to anyone. So forth, so on. Would you like to keep that? No, I don't want anything of yours. Well, you can keep it if you like. It's not a very good piece. It was a nice idea that uh, went wrong. It's distorted somehow. Just a bit uh, warped in its conception, twisted. In fact, for some reason, it's always reminded me of you. Of me? Yes. Just a bit uh, off. God, how I hate you. Hate? Oh, I don't think so. It wasn't hate that had us wrestling around the couch last night. It was passion. Maybe even love. Love? Yes. Love.
Come in. Everything packed? Yes, everything. Right in here. Debbie. Yes. How long? How long what? Will it take to get to Australia? Well, it's going on a tramp. First Yokohama, then Hong Kong, Manila, Singapore, then on down to Australia. About two months, maybe three. You in a hurry? No, I'm not. But the uh, person it's being shipped to might be. You know, you can't tell about these tramps. Might get there early and be a surprise. Yes, I'm sure it'll be a surprise. It's still the same old story A fight for love and glory A case of do or die 